Vyakarana Sanskrit explanation analysis refers to one of the six ancient Vedangas, ancillary science connected with the Vedas, which are scriptures in Hinduism. Vyakarana is the study of Sanskrit. Panini and Yaska are the two celebrated ancient scholars of Vyakarana, both are dated to several centuries prior to the start of the Common Era, with Panini likely from the 5th century BCE. Panini's Astadhyayi is the most important surviving text of the Vyakarana traditions. This text consists of eight chapters, each divided into four padas, cumulatively containing 4,000 sutras. The text is preceded by abbreviation rules grouping the phonemes of Sanskrit. Panini quotes ten ancient authorities whose texts have not survived, but they are believed to have been Vyakarana scholars. Vyakarana is related to the fourth Vedanga called Narukta. Vyakarana scholarship has dealt with linguistic analysis to establish the exact form of words to properly express ideas, and Narukta scholarship has focused on linguistic analysis to help establish the proper meaning of the words in context. etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> Vyakarana IPA means separation distinction discrimination analysis explanation of something it also refers to one of the six vedangas or the vedic field of language analysis specifically grammatical analysis grammar linguistic conventions which creates polishes, helps a writer express and helps a reader discriminate accurate language. The word Vyakarana is also found in Mahayana sutras and first millennium Mahayana Buddhist texts, but with a different meaning. Vyakarana, in these Buddhist texts, means a prediction or prophecy by a Buddha to a bodhisattva who has just embarked on the path, that he will achieve enlightenment and be a Buddha. History Vyakarana emerged as a distinct auxiliary field of Vedic study in ancient times. Its aim was to prevent sloppy usage and transmission of the Vedic knowledge, states Howard Coward, a professor emeritus at the University of Victoria and the founding editor of the Journal for Hindu Christian Studies. Vyakarana helped ensure that the Vedic scriptures of Hinduism and its message of Sabda Brahman, explanation of metaphysical truths through words that Vedic rishis had realized by their efforts, remains available to all in a pristine form. In Indian traditions, Vyakarana has been one of the most important sciences, one extensively studied over its history, and that led to major treatises in the philosophy of language. Panini and Yaska, two celebrated ancient scholars of Vyakarana, are both dated to several centuries prior to the start of the Common Era, likely the 5th century BCE. However, both of them cite prior scholars and texts, which though lost to history, imply that the field of Vyakarana was an established and developed science of language before them. Between the two, Yaksa may be the older one and more known for Narukta etymology, the fourth auxiliary field of Vedic studies, but the evidence for him preceding Panini is scanty and uncertain. In terms of dedicated treatise on Vyakarana, Panini is the most recognized ancient Hindu scholar, and his Astadhyayi eight chapters 
is the most studied extant ancient manuscript on Sanskrit grammar. Panini's fame spread outside India, and the reverence for ancient Panini in northwest India is mentioned in Chinese texts of Xuanzang, the 7th century traveller and scholar. The study of grammar and the structure of language is traceable to the Rigveda, or 2nd millennium BCE, in hymns attributed to sage Sakalya. Sakalya is acknowledged by Panini's works. The literary evidence that the science of Vyakarana existed in Vedic times abound in the Brahmanas, Aranyakas and Upanishads, states Moritz Winternitz. The extant manuscripts of Panini and Yaksa suggest that the Vedic age had competing schools of grammar. One school, for example, held that all nouns have verbal roots, while another held that not all nouns have verbal roots. However, it is unclear how, who or when these ancient Vedic theories of grammar originated, because those texts have not survived into the modern era. Pre-Paninian schools There were many schools of Sanskrit grammar in ancient India, all established before the mid-first millennium BCE. Panini's Astadhyayi, which eclipsed all other ancient schools of grammar, mentions the names of ten grammarians. Some of these pre-Paninian scholars mentioned by Panini include Apasali, Kasyapa, Gargya, Galava, Kakravamana, Bharadwaja, Sakatiana, Sakalya, Sanaka, and Svatayana. The works of most these authors are lost, but we find reference of their ideas in the commentaries and rebuttals by later authors. Yaskas Narukta is one of the earlier surviving texts, and he mentions Sakatiana, Kraustuki, Gargya among others. <laughs> Post-Paninian schools Panini's Astadhyayi is the most ancient extant manuscript on Vyakarana. It is a complete and descriptive treatise on Sanskrit grammar in aphoristic sutras format. This text attracted a famous and one of the most ancient basya commentary called the Mahabhasya. The author of the Mahabhasya is named Patanjali, who may or may not be the same person as the one who authored the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. The Mahabhasya, literally, great commentary, is more than a commentary on Astadhyayi. It is, states Howard Coward, the earliest known philosophical text of the Hindu grammarians. Non Hindu texts and traditions on grammar emerged after Patanjali, some of which include the Sanskrit grammar text of Jainendra of Jainism and the Chandra school of Buddhism. Patanjali's great grammatical discourse is regarded as the classical model for academic texts. It is written with a great deal of didactic skill as a dialogue in clear, simple Sanskrit, and contains many enlightening examples. One notices that the text follows in the tradition of instruction, similar to the dialogue style of the Western classics of antiquity. Later Indian scholars simplified Panini rules, and trimmed his compilation of sutras to essential 1,400 from comprehensive 4,000, eliminating those they felt were too difficult and complicated. Non-Hindu traditions, such as Jainism and Buddhism, developed their own Vyakarana literature, but all of them are dated to the first millennium CE, all of them condensed Panini, accepted and flowered largely from his theories of Vyakarana. 
the 5th century Hindu scholar Bhartrari has been the next most influential Vyakarana thinker, wherein he presented his philosophy of grammar and how language affects thoughts. His theories on philosophical problem of meaning contained in the Vakyapadya, has been unique, states Howard Coward. Bhartrari is considered to be a major architect of the Svota theory of meaning. In the Hindu traditions, Bhartrari ideas were widely studied, but challenged as well in the last half of the first millennium, particularly by the ritual driven, Mamamsa school of Hindu philosophy and by Dharmakirti of Buddhism. The Advaita Vedanta school of Hinduism defended the ideas of Bhartrari. About the 7th century, the Kasikavti co authored by Jayaditya and Vimana, and the 10th century studies of Helaraja on Vyakarana were the next major milestone. These Hindu texts were not only commented in Hindu tradition, but were the foundation of works of the Buddhist Jinnendra Buddhi, who is known for his grammar insights in Buddhist literature. The most studied Vyakarana scholars of early and mid second millennium are Kesirasvaman, Haridatta, Maitreya Rakshita, and Kayata. The modern era Vyakarana scholars have included Bhartoji Dikshita, Konda Bhata, and Nagesha Bhata. <laughs> Location In terms of the place of Vyakarana scholarship over South Asian history, from ancient to 16th century, Kashmir, Kerala, Nepal, Andhra Pradesh, Varanasi and Bengal have been influential, but the location of many Vyakarana scholars is unknown. Texts. <laughs> <laughs> Panini's text Astadhyayi is in sutras format, has eight chapters, and cumulative total of 4,000 sutras. These rules are preceded by a list of 14 groups of sounds, in three sections called the Shiva Sutra, Pratyahara Sutra and Maheshvara Sutra. The Astadhyayi groups the rules of language, for clear expression and understanding, into two, the verbal and the nominal basis The text consists of an analytical part covered in the first five chapters, and a synthetic part found in the last three chapters. The Astadhyayi manuscript has survived with sets of ancillary texts appendices whose dates of composition and authors are contested. The main text is notable for its details and systematic nature, syntactic functions and arranging the sutras in an algorithmic fashion where the grammar rules typically apply in the order of sutras. The Astadhyayi sutras were widely studied and a subject of the Basya review and commentary tradition of Hinduism. The oldest emendation and commentary on the Astadhyayi is attributed to Katyayana tilde 3rd century BCE, followed by the famous Mahabhasya of Patanjali tilde 2nd century BCE, which has survived into the modern age. Other commentaries on the Astadhyayi likely existed, because they are cited by other Indian scholars, but these texts are believed to be lost to history. <laughs> Discussion Panini writes that the Anjna popular usage of a word is the superseding authority, and the theoretically derived meaning of a word must be discarded and instead superseded by that which is the popular usage. 
The Artha meaning of a Shabda word is established by popular usage at the time the text was composed, not by etymological theory nor historical usage nor later usage. A sentence is a collection of words, a word is a collection of phonemes, states Panini. The meaning of Vedic passages has to be understood through context, the purpose stated, keeping in mind the subject matter being discussed, what is stated, how, where and when, the Astadhyayi tradition of Sanskrit language, with some reservations, accepts the premise that all words have verbal roots, and that words are created by affixing fragments to these roots. However, Panini asserts that it is impossible to derive all nouns from verbal roots. The Astadhyayi is primarily focused on the study of words, how words are formed, and their correct architecture. However, it does not exclude syntax. Panini includes the discussion of sentence structure. The text, State Howard and Raja, describes compound word formation based on syntactic and semantic considerations, such as in Sutra 2.1.1. <laughs> what is a correct sentence Panini asserts that a proper sentence has a single purpose, and is formed from a group of words such that, on analysis, the separate words are found to be mutually expecting each other. A sentence, states Panini, must have syntactic unity, which includes mutual expectancy of the words and phonetic contiguity of construction. Panini adds semantic fitness yogayata, but not tacitly. He accepts that a sentence can be grammatically correct even if it is semantically inappropriate or a deviant. <laughs> what does a word mean? The Astadhyayi describes numerous usage of words, and how the meaning of a word is driven by overall context of the sentences and composition it is found in. The popular usage and meaning of a word at the time the text was composed supersedes the historical or etymologically derived meanings of that word. A word has the conventional meaning at the time the text was composed, but it is not so when it is quoted cited or referred to from another prior art text. In the latter case, the Sanskrit word is suffixed with eti literally, thus, wherein it means what the prior text meant it to be. Yaska asserted that both the meaning and the etymology of words is always context dependent. <laughs> Syntax, verbs and words Vyakarana in the Hindu traditions has been a study of both the syntax structure of sentences, as well as the architecture of a word. For instance, Panini asserts that grammar is about the means of semantically connecting a word with other words to express and understand meaning, and words are to be analyzed in the context they are used. Katyayana is quoted in Patanjali's Mahabhasya on Vyakarana as asserting the nature of a sentence as follows. Similarly, Sayana asserts the scope of Vyakarana to be as follows. A word that is a verb is concerned with bhava to become, while a noun is concerned with sattva to be, reality as it is. Sattva and bhava are two aspects of the same existence seen from the static and dynamic points of view. 
Verbs according to Vyakarana indicate action in a temporal sequence while nouns are static elements, states K. Kunjani Raja. Patanjali's Mahabhasya Patanjali's 2nd century BCE Mahabhasya is another important ancient text in Vyakarana scholarship. It not a full commentary on everything Panini wrote in Astadhyayi, but it is more a commentary on Kachyana's text on grammar called Vartikas, as well as the ideas of Vyadi. While Kachyana's editions have survived, Vyadi have not, the Kachyana's text reflects an admiration for Panini, an analysis of his rules, their simplification and refinement. The differences between the grammar rules of Panini and of Kachyana may be because of historical changes to Sanskrit language over the centuries, state Howard Coward and K. Kunjani Raja. Topic: Bhartri's Vakyapadya. The Vakyapadya of Bhartrari is a treatise on the philosophy of language, building on the insights of prior Vyakarana scholarship. According to Bhartrari, states Shaftstein, all thought and all knowledge are words. Every word has an outward expression and inward meaning. A word may have a definition in isolation but it has meaning only in the context of a sentence. Grammar is a basic science in the Hindu traditions, explains Shaftstein, where it is externally expressed as relations between words, but ultimately internally understood as reflecting relations between the different levels of reality. Word is considered a form of energy in this Hindu text, one with the potential to transform a latent mind and realize the soul. Language evolves to express the transient material world first, and thereon to express feelings, the human desire for meaning in life and the spiritual inner world. Topic. Roots of words In Yaska's time, Narukta etymology", was in fact a school which gave information of formation of words, the etymological derivation of words. According to the Niruktas or «etymologists», all nouns are derived from a verbal root. Yaska defends this view and attributes it to Sakatiana. While others believed that there are some words which are ruddy words. Ruddy means custom, meaning they are a part of language due to custom, and a correspondence between the word and the thing if it be a noun or correspondence between an act and the word if it be a verb root. Such word can not be derived from verbal roots. Yaska also reports the view of Gargya, who opposed Sakatiana who held that certain nominal stems were atomic and not to be derived from verbal roots. Influence <inaudible> 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 The Vyakarana texts have been highly influential on Hindu philosophies. The concept of a sentence vakya defined by Panini, for instance, influenced and was similar to Jaimini, the later era founder of Mamamsa school of Hindu philosophy. However, ritual-focused Mamamsa school scholars were generally opposed to central ideas of the Hindu grammarians, while others Hindu schools such as Vedanta championed them. Panini's work on Vyakarana has been called by George Cardona as one of the greatest monuments of human intelligence.
equals equals notes <laughs>